How do you feel about this list right now? I love the golden age part aspect of this list. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I like every book on this list. In fact, I borderline love every book on this list. Oh, okay. I w- I'm serious. If I had a date, any one of these books, I don't know if it would be an easy choice. All right, let's get into it. Okay. Coming at you live through the powers of the internet, broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth, we're talking about some golden age comic books, some modern comic books, comic books. Why? Because they're worth a lot and collectible. That's right. Courtesy of CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, we cover the hot list every single Friday, the comic books that spike, that cause a ruckus in the community. But every week, there are two books that don't quite break the top 10, and typically... Half of them are gold. So you know we got the Golden Age Guru here to enlighten us. It's just a cool list of just great books that you know I love. Some of these books you introduced me to in this last month. So hit that subscribe button. We got a full list of 10 books to talk to you about because there were five Fridays in March. Let's get into it here at number 10. So coming at number 10, I've seen this on your hot list of late, um, is that Naomi Wan book. That's right. Brian Michael Bendis Goodness. This is a book that made the list that's been going up in value. Number two and three also going up in value, making the hot list more than once. And it's because it's a great story. It's fantastic. I'm actually really excited about this. Fire Guy Ryan said that this was his favorite pickup over this last month. And I'm excited to see it here because CBSI mentioned it on their honorable mentions before it spiked. And this is a brand new story brand new character, and they were spotting it early on. So I appreciate them for bringing that to the community so people could get it in hand before it went up in value. Yeah, because when this came on to honorable mentions, it was like 10 bucks. But I think at this point, a few weeks plus later, it's doubled, as it not? Absolutely, yeah. It's going strong. Just like this next book at number nine. Number nine is Planet Comics number one. And this book I get asked for at least every other month. At least by one person. I mean, it's an extremely hot title. Lou Fine did the cover. I'm not the biggest fan of the first issue's cover. It's a little blah. But I got to tell you, people love it. And the first 22 issues, they call rivets because they have rivets in the planet title. And those are the more coveted because they're just considered coveted. But I really think this this title really gets in the swing of things for me, artwork-wise, probably around late 20s on. And it goes all the way up to like 72, 73 issues. Great run. Good first issue to start off for science fiction in an early time frame. I think it was like 1940. This book had some major sales this last month, didn't they? Yeah, a 5.5 five sold this month for 6,600. Okay. But a 6.0 sold in 2016 for 3,800. Oh, wow. That's big differences. Yeah, huge difference. So obviously, this book's in high demand. It has been for years. I've had two copies of this book. It sells every time right away. Yeah, you bring up Planet Comics and like you're like when you're hunting for collections, that's definitely one that you're keeping an eye out for a lot, are you not? Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. Early 40s sci fi. I mean, it's just, it's just a great run. It moves pretty good every time. Just like this next one on the list, we have Eternals number one coming in at number eight. This is the 30 cent price variant. Now we know Eternals 1 is a spec book. We also have confirmation as of this past week that Angelina Jolie is going to be making her Marvel Cinematic Universe debut in the Eternals. This right here is the rarest and scarcest of the Eternal of really of the Eternal issues. Eternals number 1 is the first appearance of these characters and that 30 cent is the one to grab, and it is major spikes over this last few months. I'm looking at a 9.4 that went for $1,500, nine O's going for $900. Big gains for a book that people are betting on. There's going to be hype now, for sure. I mean, Eternals has already been hype, but you're going to put a star name like Angelina Jolie behind it. I mean, it's automatically going to bring attention to the title it's gonna be bringing a lot of people to a team that a lot of um, individuals aren't aware of so it's good that we have some big faces to these characters potentially all right let's take a look at number seven on the list so number seven is not what you expect but it's actually peanuts one Ooh, okay this was interesting i saw this on there it just didn't click to me that peanuts had a comic book but of course it did yeah of course it did charles schultz creator and uh artist uh, writer for this issue and really peanuts in general. I think it was like a news strip for some reason. But yeah, yeah there's a ton of 
uh, Peanuts comics. Yeah, created Snoopy, Charlie Brown, Lucy, all of them. Of course. For Peanuts 1, it's always been a hot book in the comic marketplace, but obviously not like superhero stuff. But those who know, know. But the thing you don't know, and this book's numbers are, are crazy high, it's not really even their first appearance. Their first appearance is in Tip Top Comics 173 and United Comics 21, same time it came out. Okay, okay. 1952. Peanuts 1 came out in 53. Now, the numbers aren't as high for those two books, but I think it's just because it hasn't had the exposure. You don't really know that. But now that you know, you can probably find this one day at a show floor because somebody just, it's a silly cover. It's just, you would never know Peanuts are on the inside. Interesting. So what is Peanuts 1 going for? So last summer, a 2-0 and a 5-0 sold. Okay. The 2-0 sold for 2300 and the 5-0 sold for 4300 yeah. Yet, okay. we just had a sale of a 3-0 go for $5,100. Holy smokes. Right. Peanuts. Peanuts. Okay, very cool. Now, I'm curious because you mentioned these true first appearances of Peanuts. What would you expect those earlier appearances to go for? So those early appearances are still going to fetch a good coin. I mean, a 2-0, you're still going to spend probably at least a grand on to get a copy of that book. Interesting. But still, that's a huge difference given that their first appearance is a full year earlier than that Peanuts 1. I find that fascinating. Yeah, me too. I don't understand why, but... Market will dictate what market will dictate. Absolutely. Just like spiking this next book here at number six, Teen Titans issue number 75, we're looking at the Adam Hughes variant. Gorgeous cover. Adam Hughes making the list. I believe he made the honorable mentions list last month as well. So it's good seeing some representation of his fantastic artwork making the list again this month. Now, what's interesting about this book is, it's super scarce, low distribution. This was something that was, it's one in 25. And it's interesting because CGC puts it as just a one in 25 variant standard. That's what it is, just like any other one in 25. CBCS calls it a retailer incentive edition. And that's partially because it's low distribution, um, more than average at that time. This book was going for right around four to five hundred dollars for quite some time. And then it spiked back up to six hundred dollars. This is a book that came out in 2009. We've had in the last about and in the last year and a few months, like year and four months, only four copies graded of this book hit the CGC census, and they were all 9.8. We have a grand total of 13 9.8s that are in existence right now. So if you have a raw copy, it would behoove you to add it to the census. So rolling in at number five is Chilling Tales 16. Love this run, man. Yeah, it's not a very long run, but issues 13... 15 and 16 are just solid covers of just horror and macabre, all right? And they're done by a small publisher, Youthful Publications. They were only around about five years, but whatever they put out for that type of genre was just, is very memorable. You know, they had a couple other titles too, Beware Number 11. It's got like a guy with rats all over him. And there's a Captain Science as well, which is just another good run. It had uh, issue number three and number seven are just other great covers. Fantastic covers. I dig the ghouls. And especially in this particular issue here, you got like this woman that is in bondage being dropped into what looks like a flaming pit. Yeah, and these kind of skeletal faces with hoods just kind of grinning and dropping her, I believe, right? Yeah, it's like it's super um, pre-code horror. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So... We saw some gains with this book. Yeah, there's been some definitely some gains with these things, um, especially horror in general. Really, horror has been like the hottest genre there is right now. I mean, I'm seeing numbers that I couldn't even wildest dreams would imagine these books would get. And I know the guide has this pretty low. Yeah, the guide has this book at $180. Okay. Yet we just saw 4.0 sell for over 1600 Holy smokes. Okay, so I'm expecting to see some big changes here in coming months when we get the new Overstreet price guide. You can expect it, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's take a look here at number four. We have Secret Avengers issue number 23. We have the second print. We have the first appearance of Agent Venom. This is a pretty scarce book and one that had some gains over this last month low-key went up in value i'm thinking because of donny cates we know that he's doing this carnage big event for the symbiotes and we know he's going to be incorporating 
many, if not every single symbiote that is in Marvel history. So there's a lot of speculation of these characters because it just takes one. It takes one to be done by Sir Cates in a unique way to cause one of these books to spike hard, as we know. This particular book was going for like 10 to 15 bucks. And if you look through the last 30 or so days, this book went from 15 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. We have books hitting above $45 here. And, you know, I'm excited to see what Mr. Sir Cates has in store for us. So jumping into number three is going to be Great Comics number three. Now, I know this book well because I just picked up a copy at Cal Comic Con and we did a whole video of Dude, examining this book. Seeing this on the list was super funny because that was a really interesting moment for me being there. All right. What you don't see in this movie, we'll make sure the link's up there for you to see it. But we got it on camera. You taking a look at this book and analyzing it, counting pages, making sure this is a book that you wanted to buy. And what you don't see in the video is like the person taking out the books and putting them on the table and then just the swarm of dealers that had to just in that 10 seconds use of every bit of knowledge that they had their Rolodex of, of covers to just spot and just scan a table. And I watched you do that in about 10 seconds, ignore a, a sea of gold, just awesome comics and grab this one. And then like three other dealers go, Oh, and then they waited. And I did not put it down because <laughs> if I let that book go, this guy right here. Woo. Let me see that bad boy. Oh, talk about this book. Yeah, if I let that down, I wasn't going to get it back. I actually grabbed another book, too, um, uh, that was also just a really great book that uh, to this day, like months later, our, our people are asking me, are you selling that book yet or not? I was like, nope. <laughs> it's so, a PC. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> Uh, anyways, great book. I've been looking for that book. I, the second I saw it, I was like, I have to grab this thing because, A, I know what it is. You don't ever see it. Uh, classic cover. Hitler gets kidnapped and yeah, brought to hell? Yeah, he's basically brought to Satan. And I think I read the story, but it's so confusing and it's weird. And it's like watching Fantasia in hell with <laughs> Hitler somehow. And like it's this weird... It's definitely Sensory the cover. overload of like what? And the cover's a great cover though, too, though. So <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those books. Okay, super scarce. Uh, but there were two sales of it. Okay. And let me give you some of their numbers. Yeah, this is like big numbers, too. So about four weeks ago, a 2.5 hit $6,600. A 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. And in that same auction, an 8.0 went for $31,000. What can you have? Dude, $31,000. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Someone uh, really appreciates their vintage gold. And you know what? The colors pop, and I see why this book would be popular because it's just like you definitely get lost in it because there's a lot to see. And like, what is this here, too? Like, look at all these demons. There's a random person here just like. Oh, you should see the back cover. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it crazy? It is. It's like I think someone being lifted and fed into a mouth. Okay, well, like, we'll have to break it open and show the picture yeah. now. Very cool. All right, great comics coming in on the list. Very cool. I was, it's awesome to see that after the con. Dude, I am so glad you brought that comic because I wouldn't have asked to look at the back page. Yeah, that back cover is great. It's like that scene from Attack on Titan. Yeah, it's just like getting That eaten anime by a where the people just get eaten by bigger people. <laughs> All right, coming in at number two on the list here, we have Dark Red number one, the C2E2 variants. They're called trade dress variants. The trade dress variants were numbered to 300. The Virgin copy was numbered to 100. Super low print, uh, going for $50 out the gate. Dark Red number one made the hot list earlier this month, and people are digging this comic book. Now, you went to C2E2, Recently, man, you traveled a bunch, man. You had a Golden Age collection that brought you where? To Atlanta, and that's courtesy of Barbarian Kung Fu. Yeah, Chad, thank you so much, man. That is so nice of you. Yeah, thanks, Chad. I really appreciate that. So that was a great trip. Shot out there. I was literally there for 26 hours, in, out, looked at the collection, palletized whatever else I needed to palletize. Dude, I was watching it on Instagram. That was crazy, dude. You were having to like 
do the plastic around it and everything. I mean, it was a bunch of gold you picked up. Yeah, it was it was a good collection. So I'm excited about it. I mean, I kept some pieces, of course, because that's part of my illness. <laughs> You're the guru, man. Yeah. You got to decorate the temple. Now, you went from Atlanta to back back home and then right back out to Chicago. So came from Atlanta, had to get ready for Emerald like days later, picked up my pallet Wednesday on the way to load in for Emerald. Okay, did the whole con for Emerald City, then left two days later Chicago for C2E2, did that all week, then got back here and just processed stuff, and now almost went to WonderCon today, but I just need a break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, man. It's just like nonstop <sighs> getting comics, dude. So was C2E2 a good convention, though? I mean, that, that show is popping, man. C2E2 is great. I've been to the first couple, and I haven't been back since, but I got to go back every year. It's a good show, great environment. I love Chicago, so it was it was fun to be back there. Fantastic. Okay, what's coming in at the list at number one? I was super excited to see this book hit at number one. I bet you can guess why. This just landed. We're recording this the day after the top 10, the most recent one, because you know we find out the last honorable mentions on that last Friday. So what do you think when... I saw this comic book. So I've had this book. Silver Streak Comics 15 comes in at number one. So Silver Streak is a a good title, Golden Age title. It had the first appearance of a character named Silver Streak, which was like the only second second superhero to ever have speed as their superpower. I mean, Flash came out like two months earlier. So, And then it has the first appearance of Daredevil. And not the Marvel Daredevil. The Golden Age Daredevils are different. Captain Battle appears in here. So you have issues... 14, 15, and 16, which are probably the best covers in the entire run next to number six, which is the first Daredevil. We just got in a 14. Like, you removed a sticker for me on number 14, and I got a whole point bump up Woo! from a 5.5 five to a yeah. 6.5 on mm-hmm. an amazing mm-hmm. cover. Okay, made one of the top two covers in this run. Dude, I was sweating bullets, dude. Yeah, That was the biggest uh, sticker removal job I've ever done. Yeah, you did a great job. You knocked it out of the park. But this is issue 15, which is a cool mummy cover. Okay, I don't have my copy anymore, unfortunately, but this is a great book, and number 16 is good, too, and we've seen some strong numbers with this, and really, like I said, any one of those three. So what is this book going for? So a CGC 6.0 just sold for 3300 yet a couple years ago, 5.5 would have sold for 1000 Dang. Okay, so three times the amount. Yeah, three times the amount for... Yeah. I mean, for gold, man, like it's it's one thing to see FF1 hike up thousands and thousands of dollars. It's another thing to see Hulk 181 thousands and thousands. But Silver Streak, you mentioned multiple heroes just now that I bet 95 percent of our audience have never heard of. Yeah, I mean, it's true. If you're not familiar at all with the Golden Age, that's why I had to designate Daredevil and separate it. It's cool, man. Thank you so much for coming to the table and sharing your Golden Age knowledge. Glad to have you back. You did a ton of traveling. And you know what? Thank you to CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, for putting out such great content, keeping track of not just the hot 10 list, top 10 comics every week, but giving us a little extra to ponder and representing gold every single week as well. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Ben at CBSI. We happened to run into each other at C2E2, which was completely by chance, but it was great to meet you. Oh, that's so cool that you got to meet him. I haven't met him in person yet, so I'm glad that you were able to be there and represent the show. Hey, guys, remember to like and subscribe. We make a ton of content, and we'd love for you guys to be there. Absolutely. We do appreciate your time today, combo community, and as always, geek responsibly. Nope. Said, guys, from this list of books that we just told you about, tell me your favorite, and you get a chance to win Tales from the Crypt number one. This is reprinting the famous story of Crypt of Terror number 17.